RC Davis here for Warriors.com with Len Elmore, college basketball analyst with both CBS and ESPN, former ABA player, former lawyer, kind of a renaissance man. How are you doing today, Len? I'm doing well. A little hot here on the East Coast, but uh, that's what we expect at this time of year. Got you on to talk about the draft. Um, everyone talks about the perceived lack of talent. Don't you kind of have to look at this in a vacuum? Well, yeah. I mean, look, every year you're going to make comparisons against who's going to be in the draft as opposed to past drafts. I mean, let's let's face it, you never know and, and can't really predict uh, success to a great extent um, from year to year. So you have to look at this draft, see how these players played against their peers and kind of project them uh, going forward against their peers in, in that particular year. So, you know, I, I guess the word vacuum probably is, is most apropos. You hear about a lot of teams want to trade their picks, but if everybody wants to trade their picks and what they're considering a lackluster draft, they have to find someone to draft with. They can't all trade. No, that, that's exactly true. And, and again, they, they may be scrambling around trying to find the right fit right now. When I hear teams want to trade, they're looking for guys that are going to fit their system as opposed to the, the best athlete. And, you know, in my mind, again, there are, there are so many intriguing picks that uh, ultimately – could turn into solid players down the road and can fit in certain systems, but you know the way they are aligned here, at least uh, their rank. Um, some of those players who might fit teams that are picking lower in the draft are up higher, and those teams would try to, you know, try to get into the mix with with trade. So it, it could make some sense for a lot of teams to try to trade picks and try to trade future picks and players, you know, bundle uh, to try to get guys who would actually you know benefit their system. With no clear-cut superstar like we talked about, we've like tracked for years and saw coming down the pike, could could a lot of teams be, quote-unquote, swinging for the fences here and, and going for potential? I, I think most teams are going to be going for potential. There are very few, I think, ready players, guys who are going to have impact immediately. Um, you know, I look at players like um, C.J. McCollum. I look at Victor Oladipo, Otto Porter. These guys may, Anthony Bennett and, and certainly McLemore, you know, these guys may, in fact, uh, provide help right away. Uh, but looking down the line, especially when you're talking about the bigs like Noel, like Alex Lynn, um, people like that, even Cody Zeller, these guys, you know, they're projecting them with development. They're projecting them to be uh, good players down the road, not exactly immediate impact players. And, you know, when you talk about a real stretch, uh, young man Stephen Adams, who I think has tremendous upside, but he's so inexperienced that, um, you know, I'm really shocked to see people talking about him in the first round, but somebody will take a chance on him, and if they can wait four years, he might turn out to be an outstanding player. But right now, he just doesn't have the tools um, from a, a skill standpoint to, to have immediate impact. He certainly has the athletic ability. You mentioned Stephen Adams, the uh, the uh, freshman out of Pitt. I think he uh, kind of rose up the board because he didn't really score much at Pitt, and then he gets to the combine, and wow, he's uh, knocking him down from 15. Anytime you have a big that can shoot, I guess that uh, gets the GM's attention, right? Yeah, but I, I, I'm an old school guy, and I'm still wondering why. I mean, you know, right. you've got six, ten, seven foot guys shooting threes, and, <laughs> or in in between. Um, you know, I'm old school and look for guys who can do stuff down in the block, down in the post. Certainly you want to stretch defenses. And even in this year's finals, we've seen uh, a lot of times having units out there that have no real center and they're looking to kind of spread the floor and stretch it out for the slashers. But, you know, I still think a guy that's 7 feet tall, 260 pounds, you know, certainly can do damage inside with higher percentage shots. And, you know, Stephen Adams, once he understands, you know, how to get himself open, how to, how to improve his hands, um, that's the biggest weakness he had at Pittsburgh. Couldn't catch the ball very well, and you know wasn't um, wasn't supreme in making moves inside the post. But those things can be developed, and I think if in fact he has time and the pro game will allow him to, he can develop into a pretty good big guy. And that 15 footer will just be a bonus. One of those big guys who does like to play down lows, the big guy out of Bucknell, Muscala, has a lot of post moves. Kind of reminds me of Kevin McHale. Shot over 75 percent at the combine. He's a guy that likes to stay down low. Yeah, I mean, and he's a guy that, uh, you know, the thing that's uh, simple from an improvement standpoint for him would be to kind of put on weight, get a little bit stronger. I mean, 6'11", uh, 230, I mean, he's not gigantic, uh, but certainly with the skill element, 
um, the ability to make moves inside, to draw fouls, uh, things of that nature. He's going to have to put on some weight to be really effective. But that's that's the easy part. Um, the best part about him, again, is he has sophistication down low, and those are the kind of guys that can come in and, and, and have some impact early. How much credence do you give uh, to what – happens at the combine the, the the shuttle run the standing reach the the vertical leap this uh, ricky gobert out of france had a nine foot seven inch standing reach which is unreal is that something that you kind of pay attention to or don't give much credence to um you pay attention to it because it's, it's something that you can't develop you can't teach it's there and, and what it is is gives you a building block upon which you can, um, you know, develop some skills as he's a shot blocker, um, his ability to, you know, guard the in the middle. Um, with that kind of reach, it should be easier for him to, to block shots. also easier for him to catch the ball in the post because you can get it up high enough that the opponents can't get to it. Um, the other things, the athleticism, that's essentially what these things are, are measuring. And, you know, once you find a guy has athleticism, that's, again, one of the building blocks, one of the foundations to developing a player. Now, you know, the other thing, and I think it's equally as important and sometimes even more important than athleticism, per se, is fundamentals. And, you know, that's harder to measure if a guy has, you know, supreme fundamentals, particularly inside. A guy, a big guy who can use his left hand, use his right hand, understands what a drop step is, knows how to get position. Or, you know, when you're on the outside, guys who can cross over without carrying the ball, guys who understand the one dribble, two dribble pull up, um, guys who know how to drive to the basket uh, with that quick first step, you know, upon those things you can build better players and I think that uh, athleticism is one of those uh, foundations. A couple more questions here with Len Elmore, college basketball analyst with both CBS and ESPN. You hear about a thing that d- didn't happen much in your day, guys being promised things by teams or their agents and then not working out of the combine. The scenario keeps seeming to come up again. That didn't happen back in your day. No, um, we actually didn't have combines back in our right. day. <laughs> uh, a lot more scouting uh, was done at uh, postseason games and during the season. But, yeah, you know, I, I think that the business has, has gotten to the point now where you know, you need to inject some ethics in, in, in the game. I mean, everybody looks at it and, and, and justifies, you know, promise breaking, et cetera, as well as just business. But, you know, and oftentimes you have agents who can, you know, kind of stretch the truth a little bit to their clients. Uh, Absolutely. You know, kind of aggrandize them as well. So, I mean, the bottom line is that it, the, the person who is most affected is the one who has the least amount of information and is relying on an agent or relying on the truthfulness of a team, um, you know, to, to depend upon their future. And, you know, I think that it's a shame when, you know, the young man is, is the one that's victimized by, you know, the back and forth and, uh, you know, the unethical promises or lack thereof uh, by teams when, you know, we're looking at, at their futures. Appreciate you coming on today, and we'd love to talk with you in the future. Hey, my pleasure. Anytime. For Len Elmore, I'm R.C. Davis. Click and roll on Warriors.com throughout the draft process for all the draft coverage, including Tim Roy's mock draft, as we prepare for the 2013 NBA Draft.